let me go ahead and talk about the individual firm's supply curve under perfect competition. And let me go back here and start again with our cost curves. And you'll notice that in perfect competition, really, the cost curves are absolutely central. And that comes down to the fact that in perfect competition, we have no product differentiation. So really, the only thing that firms compete on is price. And if the only thing that you're competing on is price, costs become absolutely crucial. So we're going to have our marginal cost curve. We're going to have our average total cost curve. And we're going to have our average variable cost curve. So let's go ahead and think about how much this firm is willing to supply at different prices. At a really, really low price of 1, we're going to build ourselves a supply schedule here. We saw these back in the chapter on demand and supply. At a price of one, this firm is not willing to supply anything. Every unit it could possibly produce has marginal cost greater than one, so it's going to be zero. What, at a, what about at a price like three? Now you might be tempted to sort of go, oh, this firm would be willing to produce three units. But remember that it can't produce three units without also producing one and two units. And those first and second units had relatively high marginal cost, higher than the third unit. So the place to look here <coughs> is actually to see if it can go ahead and make a profit at all by producing three. And the answer here is going to be no, because $3 is below the minimum of the average variable cost curve. So even at a price of 3, it's going to produce 0. Once price actually rises to, looks like about 450 here, this firm is finally willing to supply something. And 5, 7, 9, it looks to me at a price of 450, this firm is willing to supply nine. So it's willing to have its business be open at all once price reaches about 450. And again, remember that this is the minimum of the average variable cost curve, which is our shutdown price. So we need to at least hit that shutdown price before this firm is willing to supply anything at all. So if we were drawing the supply curve, it would essentially be zero units up until a price of 450 and then suddenly we're going to jump out to nine units at a price of 450 and then as we have further price rises after that say prices rose up to what's this six dollars here then this firm is willing to supply 11 units further price rises cause this firm to be willing to supply an amount based upon its marginal cost curve. So this super heavily shaded line here is this firm's supply curve. So except for this kind of weird stuff that goes on around down here, mostly the marginal cost curve is approximately the same thing as the supply curve for the individual firm. Or more properly, we could say the short-run supply curve for the individual firm. Because notice that if, say, for instance, this firm gets a price of 7, it would be willing to supply 12 units in the short run. But in the long run, a price of 7 isn't allowing it to break even. This firm needs a price of $8 to break even, because that's the lowest point of the average total cost curve. If we're going to go ahead and look at the long run supply curve, it's going to be the region 
of the marginal cost curve which is above this circle. So it's going to be the MC curve above the minimum of the ATC curve. Because for this region down here, although the firm is willing to stay open in the short run, in the long run, it's looking to exit the industry. So it's going to shut down because it's making a loss. On the other hand, a really high price up here, at a really high price up here, firms are making significant profits. And remember, we're talking economic profits. So they're not only covering their rate of return on capital they could get elsewhere, they're making a rate of profit that's higher than they could have on any other investments they might undertake. So although this firm is already in the market, a price that's above the minimum of the average total cost curve is going to produce economic profits and that's going to lead other firms to enter the industry. So just in summary here, if price is greater than the minimum of AVC but price is less than the minimum of average total cost then what's true firms stay open in short run and they make losses and some at least will exit the industry. If prices are equal to average total cost, then firms break even and there's no entry or exit because firms are doing about as well in this industry as they could invest their capital in some other industry. If prices are greater than the minimum of ATC, then we have positive or above normal profits, positive economic profits, or sort of supersized profits. Supranormal is the technical term here, but supersized sounds a lot better. And positive economic profits. And so this looks like a really attractive industry and so new firms enter the industry. Could also be that existing firms decide to add capacity. So that's our basic breakdown here. And again, we know from before that if price is less than the minimum of AVC, firms shut down entirely.